So, as a continuation of secret stories, this entire act is the first story that Mask involves you in to fill up his book, allowing you to go through the story multiple times to change the decisions that alter the outcome. I'll be going through every individual path you can take, so this might end up a longer video than I anticipate, but hopefully you'll enjoy it just as much as I do. The Hennessy's Haunting starts in Hennessy's, obviously. The town is currently in the middle of celebrating Halloween. Chief Stan thinks to himself as you interrupt to ask what's going on. Stan will tell you that there's been some kind of strange and spooky things happening lately. He'll tell you that Halloween is when the ghosts and dead walk among the living, and there's been talk of a skeleton dressed in tattered rags disrupting the peace in town. Stan wants you to identify the spirit and free it from its earthly tethers. Asking for a lead, Stan will tell you that it's been seen all over Hennessy's, on a dimly lit trail, in people's homes, even in the marketplace in broad daylight, but most of the reports have been seen at the trail just outside of town. You'll investigate the trail outside of Hennessy's and feel something odd around you before passing out from a little fright. The girl that scared you hangs around to help you out, makes fun of you for a bit, and then asks what you're doing around here. You'll fill her in and she'll want to join you. You'll tell her that you're just going to wait around for them to show up and she'll tell you to follow her plan instead. Her plan involves necromancy, calling out the ghost instead of waiting for it to come. She has a book about it from the library called the Necronomopedia. The name for this is a play on the Lovecraftian grimoire, the Necronomicon. Anyway, the girl will start wandering off to find the book as you ask for her name, but she'll just shrug off the question by saying you'll make a great team. When you meet up again, you'll tell her that you don't really need her help, but she'll ignore you and continue on. She suggests a seance, offering to perform the ritual so you can be the medium. But first, she needs you to harvest some monster's anguish with a magic spoon while she gets some substitutes for the rest of the ingredients. She'll make some sort of a concoction for you to drink, which won't really work properly. Then, she'll suggest that you gather some candles that burn with a special oil that smells like death to make the ghost visible. You, de Mort, gather with a magic syringe. Afterwards, you'll actually summon some ghosts this time, but they won't be what you're looking for. The girl's next plan is a spell that can call out a more powerful spirit and she'll run off to do some research. You'll wander around Hennessy's for a while and a grim reaper will reveal himself to you. He'll tell you that there's nothing to be afraid of and introduce himself as Steve. His job is to escort the near dead, recently deceased, and other stubborn specters to their final destination. He'll mention that you know who he's here for and ask for directions. In your confusion, he'll tell you that sometimes the spirits don't realize that they're actually dead, and that creates problems sometimes. The girl that you've been speaking to lately hasn't even mentioned her name, because she can't remember it. She's been wandering around this world not knowing who she is or why she's here. Something is keeping her anchored, but she can't remember what it is. Sadly, it's time for her to leave, and Grim Reaper Steve is here to guide her. He wants your help because she should remember her current happenings, and you might be able to break the news to her for her to realize that she's actually dead. From this point, this is where the choice is split off into three different outcomes, which split even further down the line. Telling her yourself will split into three different endings. Letting the Grim Reaper do it himself will split into two different endings, and simply being indecisive will split into three different endings. Some of the endings are shared and reachable through different splits, although with different cutscenes and dialogue. Ultimately, there are six different endings you can get. From the first split, choosing to let Steve handle it, he says that it's possible she'll become even more obsessed with the person or thing keeping her here. The scene skips to Steve breaking the news to her. The girl thinks it's some kind of joke, eventually getting upset at you for knowing the whole time. She'll run away, and Steve will remark how she'll be consumed by her denial. He knows of a way to summon her, which you should already be familiar with. He'll let you know that this situation could have been avoided if you had confronted her yourself. From here, you can choose from another fort, to either summon her or refuse to do it. If you decide to go along with it, you'll go through the ritual and you'll summon her to you. She'll be really upset that you used the spell that she showed you, thinking that you were friends before vanishing again. You and Steve will find her again, with Steve intending to take her away. She just wants to be left alone to finish what she came here for, but Steve will ask if she's ever stopped to think about what seeing her now would do to the people that she cares about. If running into her after so long they've lost her would really bring them any happiness. Steve will ask if she even knows who she's trying to find, but she won't remember. No one has helped or even talked to her aside from you. She didn't think that it was because she was a ghost, just because she was an annoying little girl. She asked Steve if she goes with him, if she would ever be able to return someday, once she remembers why she came here. Steve says it won't be possible, but when those important to her come to join her, she'll have her closure. After that, she'll leave you with a few parting words. You're a warrior who is supposed to protect the world. Don't ignore those in trouble the way that you ignored her. Be honest and kind to them. You can give them strength to overcome any hardship if you just learn to do that. 
She thought that you were friends and that it's too bad that things turned out this way. She'll depart with Steve, and shortly after, Chief Stan will seek you out. He's been wondering how your ghost hunt has been going. You'll let him know it's over, and he'll thank you. He'll tell you that he had an odd dream, and that someone called you a cynical jerk face. And that you need to be more considerate of others. She had a sad look on her face, and told him that you couldn't be trusted. Chief Stan, however, doesn't believe it, because you've done solid work for the people of the world. When you ask who said all of these things, he'll tell you that it was his first wife, Anna, who passed away. There's no way that the two of you have ever met, and he's not sure how long it's been since he last dreamed about her. He doesn't know why she was so critical of you, but he's still glad that you helped the town. He'll wonder if you actually found out the identity of the ghost, and if you tell him it was actually Anna, he asked if you forced her spirit to leave the world. But he doesn't press any further because he knows that you'd never do that. He just thought that maybe she had really come back to see him. He'll thank you again and invite you to come visit him after all your adventures. So, if we go back a bit and you decide not to go through with the summoning spell because she would never forgive you for it, Steve will ask if you have an alternative, because she can't simply be left alone. When Halloween ends, the door between the worlds of the living and the dead will swing shut. The girl will be lost forever and doomed to wander, neither living or dead. You'll search around a bit before finding her. She'll actually come to you for help. She needs something delivered to someone, but she can't remember what it is or to who. Steve will show up and say that no one can help her. She needs to understand that whoever she's looking for, she's a distant memory to. She says that she doesn't want to be forgotten. You can offer some solace or not, but letting her know that you won't forget her, she'll start crying and apologize to you. She would have liked for you to tell her as a friend that she wasn't really alive. She'll apologize to Steve as well, knowing that he was only here to help her. She hopes one day she can remember what she was here for and bid you goodbye. Chief Stan will show up shortly after and wonder how your ghost hunt was going. You'll tell him that it's taken care of, and he'll tell you about his odd dream. Someone told him that you were a kind and honest warrior, and asked him to look out for you. She had a smile on her face, and said that you were a good person. Someone who gives strength to common folk like him, Hennessy's, and all of Maple World. He reveals that it was his first wife, Anna, who passed away. He'll ask the identity of the ghost. If you let him know it was actually Anna's spirit, he'll ask if you went on an adventure with her. But he won't press any further. So, from the split, if you decide not to do anything, Steve will tell you that hiding the truth from her will only hurt her, and eventually the living that enter her path. You'll run into Anna again, and she'll remember something about a place that she feels was important. She knows you're still trying to find the ghost, but she wants to go to the place first. She doesn't want to go alone, and that's why she's asking you to come along. You guys will make your way to the maple tree on Maple Island. Something about the tree was calling to her. Something important is buried under it. She remembers that her and her friend were looking for a good place to bury something, and asks you to help her dig. You'll find out it's their time capsule. She wonders why the box looks so old and everything inside is dusty, because she remembers burying it just the other day. Steve will show up suddenly and mention that time will do that. It's been buried for decades. He'll remark that he noticed that you didn't tell her the truth. Steve will try to take her, and she'll freak out thinking that he's trying to kill her. Steve tells her that she's already dead, but she thinks that he's just joking. You back Steve up and let her know that you should have told her earlier, and she gets upset that you knew the whole time. From here, you have another fort, deciding to just go along with it or say that you didn't want to hurt her. Choosing to let her know that you didn't want to hurt her, you'll apologize, and she'll apologize too. Everybody's saying sorry. She'll suddenly remember everything who she is and why she's here. It's hard for her to believe, but she can't pretend it's not true. She thanks you for being honest and trying to protect her. She's sad, but she knows that it's time to go. Steve will thank you and the girl will make fun of him for looking so scary. Before they leave, the girl has a final request for you. You'll tell her to just go with Steve. This world isn't for her anymore. She knows, but she still has something that she wants to do. She entrusts the time capsule to you to deliver to its other owner her dearest friend in life, because she doesn't have the time anymore. But it has to be today. After you accept, she'll be ready to leave with Steve and they'll disappear together. From here, you have another meta split. You can either ask around town on who to give the time capsule to, or you can open it, hoping that you'll find a clue. Choosing to open it, you'll go back to the maple tree on Maple Island instead of staying in Hennessy's to ask around. There's a lot of stuff inside of the time capsule, but one of the objects is a diary. You decide to read a little bit of the diary, and you find out that it details the day that it was buried. It was meant to be opened in 40 years to the day. It mentions how the time will fly by as long as they're together. Hopefully one day with a family and a child that is just as adventurous and brave as her. She hasn't picked out a name for a girl, but if it were a boy, she'd name it Alex. You'll come to the conclusion that it's possible it could be talking about Alex from Kerning City. You make your way to him and ask him a couple questions. One of which is about the time capsule. Mentioning the diary and the name Alex written in it, although a common name, you thought it was worth asking about. Alex will ask to see it, but say that most of what's in it is a bunch of trash before noticing the photo of a young boy and girl. 
You'll ask if he recognizes the people in the photo, and Alex will tell you that it's his parents, back when they were kids. You'll ask for confirmation, and he'll say that he has a copy of the same photo. His mother gave it to him when he was young, before she passed away. It's his most treasured item. The girl is his mother Anna, and the boy is his father. You'll ask if that was Chief Stan's wife, and Alex will tell you that she was his first wife. He remarried after she died. He'll ask you how you know her, and when you tell him, he thinks you're ridiculous, unless you can actually talk to ghosts, eventually believing you. He thanks you for bringing it to him, and says that he'll show it to his dad someday when he gets home. You make your way back to Hennessy's and visit Chief Stan at his house. He'll mention no one's seen the ghost for days, and he wanted to thank you but you were nowhere to be found. You tell him that you went to go see his son in Kerning City to give him the time capsule that he and his wife buried 40 years ago. He wonders how you knew about the time capsule and if it's related to current events. You'll inform him that the scary ghost everyone was seeing around town was the Grim Reaper that came to take Anna away. Anna had come back in the form of a child to honor her promise of opening the time capsule. Stan seems disappointed and mentions how he never could keep a promise, and now he's done it again. You ask if it were a better choice to have brought the time capsule to him instead of Alex, but Stan says that it's fine because he never did tell Alex much about his mother. After you leave, Chief Stan laments to himself over Anna for forgetting about their promise. He hopes she's happy wherever she is. So backtracking a bit to the choice of asking around or opening the time capsule to find a clue. If you choose to ask around Hennessy's, Steve will show up and you'll wonder if he's back for you. He's already taken Anna where she belongs but mentions that it isn't your time, as you still have a destiny to fulfill. He did come back to stop you from what you're about to do. It's noble of you to want to help Anna and see through her last wish, but Steve says that it's a mistake. You'll wonder why he's interfering and he says if you've ever lost something precious to you, then he's sure that you would understand. The living go to great lengths to move on from the deaths of loved ones. Whoever the time capsule is meant for, forcing them to confront the loss of the girl after all these decades may only bring them pain. If she had only understood what kind of sorrow the memento would have brought to her loved ones, she never would have asked for your help. As a Grim Reaper, Steve's task isn't only collecting wayward souls, but also maintaining the boundaries between the living and the dead. He thinks it's a pity not to carry out her last wish, but hopes that you'll agree that it's better not to. You'll mention that you don't even know her name, how old she was, or where she even lived. She came here for the sole reason of something important to her, and you can't even help her with that. You weren't even able to give her a proper send-off. Steve offers to bring you some closure by showing you something about her, her most treasured memory. A boy, scared of a snail, hanging out with a girl, and the two of them burying something under the maple tree. You come to the conclusion that she was Chief Stan's childhood friend, and that she came back to open the time capsule together with him. Steve says that he can't stop you, but he wants to make sure that you make the right decision, and then he leaves. Chief Stan coincidentally shows up very shortly after. He was worried that the ghost had got you, and asks about the ghost hunt, and you'll tell him that it's dealt with, and he walks off after thanking you. You'll think to yourself that you don't truly know who the girl was, but it must have been hard for the chief to overcome the death of an old friend. So, backtracking a ton, back to when you were at the maple tree with the girl and Steve, after she gets upset with you for knowing the entire time, if you choose to just go along with it and not really say anything, she'll continue feeling pretty bad. If she were alive and you were a ghost, she never would have acted like it was some joke or play with your emotions, because you would be just as hurt as she is now. She refuses to leave or entrust anything with you. She's going to do what she came here for. As you try to get her to listen to Steve, she vanishes. Steve basically says that he told you so. He asks why you didn't just tell her the truth, because now her soul is filled with anger. If nothing is done, she'll become a vengeful apparition and will never accept what comes next. He says he now has to remove choice from the equation to force her to come with him as a last resort. It's his duty to stop the dead from interfering with the living. You ask if you can do anything to help, and Steve says clearly not. You can follow him, but stay out of his way. This ending goes back to one of the previous endings, so I'm not going to cover it again, but it's the bad ending where she basically hates you. So, backtracking all the way back to the initial split path choice when Steve asks you for help, the last one that we have left is agreeing to tell the girl that she's dead yourself. Steve will thank you and tells you that when she's ready, he'll find her. You'll meet back up with the girl and she'll wonder where you've been. She's discovered a new spell. You bluntly break the news to her that she's a ghost. She thinks that you're just playing a Halloween trick on her, but she prefers treats. You'll tell her that it's not a joke and that she's actually dead. You were looking for the ghost and found the, or a, Grim Reaper. The girl says that there's actually a Grim Reaper that exists, she'd love to meet him. She still thinks that you're joking, but you'll offer to still help her before Steve takes her away. She thinks that you're taking the joke too far before really realizing that she isn't alive. She felt like there was something she needed to do, but couldn't remember. Like some kind of invisible rope was around her ankle, dragging her down into the darkness. 
She doesn't want to leave yet because she suddenly remembers why she came here, but she can't do it on her own. With your help, it might not be too late. She has one final request. You ask her to tell you what it is, but she says it's faster to show you. Suddenly, you see the girl and a little boy. She's taunting him and poking fun at him for being scared. You notice her calling him Stan, and that you're in their past. The girl mentions that Stan had fainted when she showed him a figurine that she sculpted for him, because it was shaped like a bug. She makes fun of Stan for being too timid instead, and he noticed that she's looking a little different. She says, behind you, to Stan as if there's a ghost behind him, which is actually where you're standing. He turns around, and a snail rushes out, which he gets scared of. Suddenly, you're in a different area. The girl asks if Stan brought everything that he treasured, and he confirms. She also asks about the letter that they promised to write and give to each other in 40 years. You notice the large maple tree where they're deciding where to bury the time capsule. Stan wonders if they'll still even be close in 40 years. They've only just settled in town and who knows when they have to move on to the next. She tells him even if they leave, all they have to do is meet back up in the same place. Suddenly, you're back in the present. You ask if it was her past and the girl tells you that it was one of the happiest times in her life, the moment she yearns to return to. She remembers everything now, and wonders if it's really fair to forget all your precious memories when you die. You ask if the boy Stan is actually Chief Stan, and she'll confirm. She guesses it's probably been 40 years. Stan is probably forgotten because he's stupid, but she thought that she would be right there to remind him. She wants you to find the time capsule and deliver it to Stan. Steve shows up, and promptly says that it's time to go. The girl has a quick question for him. She wants to know if she goes with him, would she forget all her memories of Stan again? Steve says that the unfulfilled emotions that tied her to this place will not survive the trip through the veil between worlds because she would be tempted to return. However, she will not forget her memories of the past. It's only those who linger where they do not belong that are doomed to forget. The girl will turn to you and say that she knows you didn't have much time together, but it's been fun. She hopes you and Stan will come to find her one day before disappearing. Steve will let you know that you don't need to fulfill her last request. Dredging up the past could end up hurting the people she's loved in life. Sometimes it's better to let the dead lie, and that she may have forgotten for a reason. Steve thanks you for your courage and compassion, and hopes that he's the one to have the privilege of escorting you on your own journey. From here, you have another split decision. You can either deliver the time capsule to Stan like the girl hoped you would, or you can take Steve's advice and leave it be. Choosing to deliver the time capsule to Chief Stan, you'll meet up with him at his house. He'll ask if you solved the ghost mystery yet. You'll tell him it's been taken care of and deliver the capsule to him. He won't recognize it at first until he comes across the photo. He can't believe that he's forgotten about something so dear to him. He'll tell you that it's a photo of him and one of the most important people in his life. He made the time capsule with his first wife, Anna, although they weren't married at the time because they were too young. Stan mentions that the time that they spent together were happy years for both of them, but not as long as they expected. You'll tell him that you met Anna's ghost and that her last wish was for you to deliver it to him. Stan will remember that they promised to open it 40 years to the day, and that would be today. He says that he's a poor friend and a worse husband. Stan asks if the ghost that was terrorizing people was actually her, and if she looked like a horrible skeleton. Oddly, he says that he can't actually keep the time capsule, and he apologizes to Anna. He believes that keeping it would be an insult to his current wife. You wonder what to do with it instead, and Stan suggests burying it somewhere sunny, close to Anna's grave, or somewhere like the ocean. He knows that you'll take care of it. Before you leave, he quickly asks you not to tell Mrs. Ming Ming about any of it, and as you leave, you catch her outside of the house. From here, you have another split choice. You can either tell her the truth, or you can take Chief Stan's secret to your grave. She asks what you were discussing, and if you chose not to tell her, you'll just say that it was the usual defeating monsters around Hennessy's stuff. She'll thank you for your constant effort to protect the town. You'll decide on an area outside of Lith Harbor to send off the time capsule. As you let it go, you speak to yourself that you'll look out for the chief and for Alex. Wherever she is, you hope that she's happy and at peace. After an unknown amount of time, Chief Stan will find where you sent off the capsule. He wonders if Anna is at peace where she is, if she's swimming out in the ocean and frolicking with the fishes. He's sorry that he wasn't able to see her when she came back. He's no fan of ghosts, but for her, he would make an exception. He asks that she come back one day. He'd love to see her just one more time. So if we go back a little bit and you decide to tell Mrs. Ming Ming the truth, you'll let her know that you came to deliver something to the chief. You'll tell her that he asked you to keep it a secret, but you don't think that it's right to lie to her about it. You tell her all about the time capsule, and she finds it odd that someone as grouchy as Stan really made something so sentimental. You tell her it was full of mementos of his time with his first wife. You ask if she's upset about it at all, and she'll tell you that she isn't. The past is as much a part of Stan's life as the present, or even the future. She's sure the memories he made before they met are as precious to Stan as the ones that they've made since. They're part of who he is, so in a way, they're special to her too. 
She thanks you for telling her the truth and asks if it would be alright if she held on to the time capsule. She knows that the older you get, the more you cling on to the memories that you've made. There might be a time where Stan wants to rekindle the memories like these, so it'd be nice if they were here for him when it happens. She also knows that Alex ran away from home, but if he ever does come back, she wants something to remember his mother by. She hopes that when they finally meet, they'll become good friends. Going back to when you made the decision to either deliver the time capsule to Stan or not, if you decide not to, you'll go back to the maple tree and put it back. Steve will appear shortly after. He says something was nagging him to come back. He's been thinking about the kindness you showed. He was in a hurry to take her away before she could interfere with the living, but you deserve some closure for the whole thing. He knows you don't even know who she was. This forks into one of the prior endings that I covered earlier. It's the one where Steve shows you her most precious memory, so I'm not going to do that again. Ultimately, we don't really know which of the endings is truly canon, if any of them are at all. As much as I'd like for the in-game text in the future to reference back to this content, I doubt it'll ever really acknowledge any of the endings. However, despite what I literally just said, I know that in the beginning of Afterlands there's a side comment that references Steve as the Green Reaper. So I really, really enjoyed this story. I just love it when lore focuses on smaller characters and events, and it doesn't require too much overarching knowledge or too much prior knowledge. I mean, it's not a bad thing to tie in stuff like that, but I, I really like small scale stories. And I was pretty amazed at how the plan focus was Chief Stan and his first wife, but they didn't just brush aside like their child, Alex, or Stan's current wife. Because it's not really uncommon for Nexon to simply forget or ignore or even retcon existing lore, but this showed a lot of respect for the existing characters. And I know probably not too many people care about that kind of thing, but I can really appreciate them not ignoring character history, even if it's for a really small side character or something. Now, I'm actually recording this end bit two days after I finished the majority of the narration. I was having a little bit of mic problems when I was recording this, so if you hear like weird clicks or scraping or something weird, uh, sorry, I guess. <laughs> But during that time, I was looking around a bit and I noticed somebody on the official forums in the lore section actually talked about the same reasons why I love this story so much. So shout out to Fennekin on the official forums. Anyway, I know I went through the endings in a weird order, but this is the order that I went through. So if it's really jumbled up, then sorry. But if there's anything important I'm missing, let me know.